Hi, welcome to my resin bookmark tutorial. I'm going to show you today how we're going to pour epoxy resin bookmarks. Some supplies to start off with. Your silicone bookmark mold, of course. Acetone for cleaning your molds. Mold release spray to prevent epoxy from sticking to your silicone mold. A heat gun for air bubbles. A torch also for air bubbles. Alcohol ink, which you'll use to make the design. A measuring cup and syringe to measure your epoxy. The epoxy, today I'm going to be using Moz Tabletop brand epoxy. The first thing that I like to do is to clean my mold with acetone. So I dip a Q-tip in it and I wipe it all around the mold to get off any dust or any residue that might be left over from previous pours. I do that with all of my molds prior to a pour. Next step is going to be the mold release spray. This part is super important. If you aren't using mold release spray, there's a really good chance that your piece is going to stick to your mold. So it's really important to get into all the little nooks and crannies of your piece. For that, I use a little fan brush. It does get oily and greasy, so I have it for this sole purpose. I've rushed through this part of the process before and the consequences ruining your piece and your mold simultaneously because then your piece can stick to your mold and you've ruined both your piece and your mold. So take your time with this part. Another thing worth mentioning about mold release spray is that you should let it sit for at least five minutes after you've applied it. It helps the grease and oiliness of the mold release to dry up a little bit. It still will allow your epoxy piece to pop out of the mold, but it's not going to leave as much of a filmy residue on top of your piece, and that's a really important part. Next is, of course, mixing the epoxy. We have a two-part epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, part A and part B. I have 10 bookmarks that I want to pour today, and each bookmark takes about 10 milliliters of epoxy. So I'll be using this syringe to make sure that I have the right amount in each bookmark mold, that I'm not overflowing it. Here's the mixing process. So I have poured equal parts A and B. It's really important to mix them thoroughly. So that means scraping the sides and bottom that you make sure you've got everything, but it also means that you're going to need to dump it into a secondary container to ensure that you have scraped the bottom and the sides because if it's not mixed properly, it might not cure properly. And if it's not cured properly, it could forever remain tacky on you. And that's why it's so important to mix thoroughly. So you really wanna get that one-to-one -one ratio bang on that it cures properly. Another helpful tip when stirring your epoxy is to do it slowly so that you're not creating excess air bubbles because those are harder to get out later when there are a bunch of micro bubbles. Bigger ones are a little easier to get out, but just be careful that you're not mixing too much because those micro bubbles could be an issue later. When you're finished stirring everything and you've mixed it all thoroughly, you've poured it into an additional container to make sure the sides and the bottom have been scraped clean with the rest of it. You can grab your syringe and start to fill your bookmarks. I have determined that these bookmarks are about 10 mils each. So for the 10 bookmarks, I've mixed 100 milliliters of epoxy. A good way to determine how much epoxy you need is to actually fill the mold with water and then dump that water into a measuring cup so that you can see exactly how many milliliters of epoxy you need per project or per piece or per bookmark, whatever it is that you're working on. Here I'm using the heat gun to both disperse the epoxy into the molds a little easier as well as popping any additional air bubbles that might be hanging out there, micro bubbles. So that's a good way to get some little micro bubbles and things like that out of your mold before you start putting your color into it. Next I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to use this to pull out any little bubbles that I see that are still trapped in the epoxy. It could be at the bottom of the mold or on the edges of the mold, but I take a good look and I kind of push them all a little bit closer to the surface of the mold so that I can hit it with heat. Um, I'm going to hit it with the torch gun this time so that I can pop those bubbles right on the spot there and you can see that happening now. So that's with the torch gun. That's a super handy tool if you're doing epoxy work. Now here comes the fun part. This is the alcohol ink. You can do your design with it in any way, shape or form. Um, it's one of the many things that you could put into epoxy. I think that's one of the things I like about it so much is just that how versatile it is. You can put 
anything in it from you know flowers and rocks and sand and um ink to paint you can use acrylics you can use um pigments you can use powders you can use whatever you like it's pretty awesome in that sense um the creativity obviously can just bloom and go wild so i will say though when you're doing specifically ink work um a really important thing is the white that you see happening here so the white is actually what reacts with the other colors to cause what is called the ink drop which is the coolest effect and what is so awesome about using ink in epoxy um, i don't know what it is i'm sure it's a google search away finding out uh, what it is about the white that specifically reacts with the other colors in a minute here i'll zoom into the ink drop so that you can see it a little bit closer I just want to mention too that there are so many different types of epoxy and resin out there and each one may have its own benefits some of them dry and cure faster some of them dry and cure slower so that it gives you more workability time some of them are crystal clear um, you really just need to look at what you're making the application you're using it for and maybe do a little bit of research on which one is best suited for your project at hand let's zoom in now to watch the ink drop And a quick but important side note while I'm doing this ink drop, gloves are so, so handy when you are doing epoxy work. I'm currently out of them at the time, but it is a huge pain in the butt when you don't have your gloves with you. Epoxy is extremely sticky and adheres to a lot of things and is tacky for what feels like ever. So get yourself some gloves to wear. They're cheap and easy to buy and save you a lot of hassle in the long run. I hope you've enjoyed the video thus far and tomorrow we're going to be doing the demolding. Day two and this is my favorite part of the whole process is the demolding. So I like to start off with kind of breaking the edges around the mold so that I'm making sure that none of the epoxy has spilled over top and stuck to the actual top edge of the mold which can happen pretty easily and quite often so it is smart to be careful while you're taking your bookmarks out of the molds to make sure that all of the edges have cracked. Once I've done that, I like to kind of slowly peel back the mold and reveal the bookmark underneath. So now you get to see the actual design that you've made in your bookmark using the alcohol ink. I'm gonna go a little faster through this part, but you can see as I'm taking each one out, you just be slow and careful not to rip anything as the edges can sometimes stick. If you do end up having a mold that's stuck to your actual epoxy, um, you can use a Q-tip dipped in acetone and kind of rub it around the edges or the, the stuck area basically um, to try and get the acetone between the mold and the epoxy to help release it. Again, if you're not using mold release, it's almost guaranteed that your epoxy will stick to the mold and ruin both the piece itself and the mold. That acetone trick might not work every time, but it does help when you have a small area that's stuck or adhered, or you've missed a small area with the mold release. If I do find that a piece has any sharp edges on the back, I use a wet sandpaper so that's when you put water on the actual sandpaper. It's specifically purchased as wet sandpaper. Uh, you can get it at any hardware store. I use a 600 grit and lightly scuff the edges until the sharp piece or the imperfection is gone. As you can see, we're just about done demolding these. After demolding and cleaning up any sharp edges, really the last thing to do is to select and put on your bookmark tassels. That's something that you can also find online in any color. And that's it. Your bookmarks are complete. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or are interested in seeing some more pores, you can find me online on Facebook or on Instagram at Maura Jane underscore designs.